Rendering night scenes in Blender can be a little bit tricky and can seem pretty challenging, but I'm going to be taking you through step by step my process for rendering something like this in Blender. So if you haven't seen it already, check out part one and two and the link in the description. And then part three today, I'm going to be taking you through the landscaping lighting. And I thought it would be fitting to film this at nighttime because why not? So you can see um, it's looking a little bit different from the second episode, mainly just been adding lighting in this lounge section here, but using the exact same techniques that I taught you in the second episode. So I'm just going to quickly walk through and show you what's changed and um, basically I added some lights in the ceiling here, exactly the same process as in the last episode and then also I added something that I do quite a lot if it's a night scene. In the kitchen, I just added a plane behind the splashback, or I guess above the splashback, and it's just got a emission shader on it, and it just kind of washes some nice warm light along the splashback. So that's just a nice little interior detail that you can add, um, and I also added some lighting under the pendant lights as well, so they're just some little spheres. Uh, if I can get out of the kitchen island. <laughs> uh... I think we're stuck in the kitchen island. Okay, um, yeah, th that's basically it. So if I go back to the view, we're going to be adding some lighting along the um, along the exterior fencing and some nice little feature lights in the garden. And also we're going to finish with some lighting in the pool. So to start out with, I'm literally going to copy um, one of the lights that I did inside and I'm just going to alter it a little bit. So let's get out of render view. And I'm just going to jump into the house real quick. Cool. And I'm just going to duplicate this. Oh, if I can get out of the bush. <laughs> so let's just duplicate this, bring this out. This is just going to be the rough shape. I like to reuse assets and shapes all the time. It just saves a lot of time. All right, so this is kind of the shape that I want it to have, but obviously this is just like a light stick. It's just all emission shader. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go tab into it. Okay, I'm going to select, you can press full stop on something to like zero in on it. Oh, I'm going to go into insert faces and then we're just going to click and drag in. And then we're going to go E for extrude and we're going to go up. So what we're going to do now is go into our material settings. You can see it's got that same material as the inside. I'm going to go on the plus icon and I'm actually going to change this one to a black metal texture. Literally so easy. I'm just, I'll, I can just remove this. I can go new. Um, we're going to do this real straightforward. Base color, you just make this black or kind of like dark gray. So I'm just going to go down here. You don't want it to be pure black because that's not realistic. Bring the metallic up. Um, you can bring the roughness up a little bit too. Just balance it out. It doesn't really matter because it's going to be nighttime. It's going to just look black anyway. And then I'm going to tab into here. In the second material, I'm going to, if you don't get that, you can kind of just go pl on the plus and then you get another material. Um, I'm going to go into, actually, let me tab out of this. Let's just remove these two. So it's all just black. Let's go add a material and we're going to make a new material and we're going to call this light outside. If I can spell properly. And let's tab into this. Let's go on light outside and we're going to go assign. So everything else is the, um, the black metal material and then only this one has the light outside because we've got a sign. So let's just delete the principled BSDF, drag out the surface, emission shader, click on that. We're going to drag out color and we're going to go black body color. And let's do, let's do 3000. It's going to be a little bit cooler. Actually, let's do 3500 because we want the interior lights to be nice and warm and the outside to still be nice and warm but slightly cooler. On the emission, I'm going to go 100, and I actually think I'm just going to move this out a bit. So this is literally our light. What we can do now is flip this around, 
and let's do that by rotating I'm gonna go 180 and I'm just gonna make a quick array so um, I think that's probably quite good so if I let's just do 10 let's bring this out let's bring this kind of into the garden okay so this is going to be right up by the fence and it's going to be shining up so let's just bring this right up by the fence let's bring this right down I want this to be nice and hidden but we're going to really make sure that we can see the light effect but not the source of the light that's like that's the secret to really nice um, interior and exterior lighting most of the lights you don't want to see them you know you just want to see the source of the light but you know a few things like pendant lamps and you know um, other kind of feature lights it's nice to see the light but you don't want like the the main source of the light to be to be visible so I'm just jumping into cycles now and we can see how it's looking so far okay so you can actually see <laughs> literally nothing what I'm going to do is I'm going to ramp this strength right up. I'm going to go a thousand until we can start to see something. Let's do 5,000. And because it's outside and it's quite open and there's not a lot of bounce light, you, you know, you're not really going to see so much of a effect. So let's just drag this up a little bit until we start to see the lighting and then we can drag it back down. So you can see that's super bright. We can kind of adjust that now that we have an idea of, um, you know, like what, what its actual intensity is like. So let's do a thousand again. And let's see how that looks against the bush. Yeah, that's quite nice. I just had an idea. Something that I'm going to do here instead of up lights, because I might still do up lights, but I'll do a different kind, is I'm going to do a combined up and down light. So it's literally so easy. We're just going to do the exact same process. Let's tab into it, wherever it is. And um, we're going to go on this side now. So we're going to go inset faces, same process. And we're going to go E to extrude. And then on this bottom face, we're going to click on light outside and we're going to go assign. So let's just quickly see how that looks now. So we've added the light material to the top and the bottom. Okay, so now that we have the light on the top and the bottom, you can actually start to see the effect is pretty good there. Um, I think that's probably strong enough. What I might do now is just duplicate that across to the other side. Okay, yeah, I actually quite like that. That's good. So we're going to duplicate it by going Shift D and we're going to go Y to go on the Y axis. And let's just move this over the other side and then we can kind of zone in on it and just tweak it a little bit. Whoa. Okay. Yep, I think that's pretty good. Because you don't want it to, you know, you just want a little bit of accent lighting. You don't you don't want it to overpower the scene. Um, and then what we're going to do is just quickly go out of the cycles mode. All right, so what we're going to do now is create some globals. And this is something that I've done on a project before. So we're just going to click on it. We're going to go new and we're going to call this global and we're going to go uh, emission shader let's just drag that in chuck that in add that uh, connect that to surface and then same process we're going to do a black body color this is way more accurate than trying to pick a good color you know so we're going to go 3500 cool and emission let's just do 50 for now and we're just going to kind of tuck this into the garden and just kind of see what we see what we see let's uh, jump jump into cycles so we just want to get one right and then we can kind of duplicate it around 
All right, so this is just loading in now. Um, it's taking a little while because it's such a heavy scene. There's a lot of vegetation in here and stuff like that. Um, but you can see that's kind of starting to look pretty good. Um, I'm just going to quickly go into the camera view and we can kind of see in that view how the little glow sphere has an impact on the on the garden planting. So that's pretty good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just tuck that way in and then like right in the super dense planting and then you won't actually really see the source of the light that much. So let's just literally I'm going to go like outside the outside the brick wall. I'm going to make it so that it just comes in. Okay. And I'm just going to array a few of those. Okay, let's just turn the factor up. Cool. Sweet as. Great. And then let's just go on the other side. Cool. We're going to do the exact same thing. Let's just bring it right in just so it's right down there. Cool. Okay. And I, th oh, that's actually, let's bring this way down because we don't actually want to see the source of that light. I think that'll be quite good. So let's just quickly check that out in cycles. All right. So that's starting to look really nice, especially over this right hand side. You can see it's just you can't really see the source of light. You can see it kind of up here, but it's just really nice and mysterious. You've got that nice green glow there. The left hand side, you know, it gives a little bit more away, but it's still really nice and interesting. This green um, vegetation really contrasts nicely with the orange of the interior and the blue of the sky. You've actually got all three complementary colors, which is really cool. I don't normally do that in my renders but it's actually turned out quite well um, and the last thing I'm going to do real quick is add some pool um, is add some pool lights <laughs> my words aren't working eight hour you know working eight hours at work and uh, come home and I can barely talk but I thought I'd film now because I've got way more energy than if I wake up in the morning and film Anyway, that's besides the point. Um, so what I'm going to do is drag um, these lights across and I'm just going to kind of jerry-rig it into being pull lights. It's going to be real straightforward. So let's jump into it. So let's go out of viewport shading. And I'm just going to drag these and bring this across. And let's make the fixed count like five. And that's pretty good. I'm just going to bring this in and down. We're going to go under the water. Perfect. And I, as I, I think I can recall, it's an angled um, pull floor. So let's just tab into that. And I'm just going to go on side view. And I'm just going to rotate this until it kind of lines up doesn't really matter because it's going to be deformed by the water anyway um, but let's just kind of like see how see how good we can get it I just I just want to show you guys how to do it I, it doesn't need to be you know super perfect let's just bring this up now because actually it's it's just gonna be right on the edge of the concrete let's just make sure that all sections are working there and then we're gonna go array again and we're going to actually array it on the y factor and we're just going to do three we're going to go one in the middle and then one on the other side so that's kind of how it's looking and then um, let's just do a you can go new material so we're going to use the light outside material we're going to go cl click new material and it's going to like copy what we already made so it saves a lot of time we're just going to call this pool light. Cool. And then we're going to change this temperature to like 5,000. And it's going to be nice and cool. So it's going to kind of match that nice cool blue, you know, water vibe. So let's go into cycles mode. 
All right, so you can see um, the pool lights are actually shining quite a lot of light up at the trees. And I think it might just be a little bit too much. So let's move the strength down to 500. And by the way, those are literally all the standard lights that I use for all my work. You can check it out on my Instagram. You can have a look at the night shots. And it's literally so straightforward. I don't use any like special models or anything. I just make cylinders and you know, just kind of, it's pretty, it's pretty rough and ready, but it, it works quite well, um, and that's literally, like, that's literally it, um, so next week, we're going to be, um, rendering this out, we're going to be taking this into Photoshop for post-production, I'm going to be taking you through how I edit my night renders to get a nice moody vibe, and it's not, you know, super bright and happy, but it's still got that really nice cinematic quality to it. And don't forget to check out my Instagram at Oliver Higgins Architecture if you want to see the kind of work I do as a professional. And also check out my Discord, there's a link in the description. Um, you can post your work and you can get feedback from me and the community, and it's just a really great place to learn and grow as a ArcViz artist. So I'll see you guys next week. Cheers.